This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning or good afternoon, whatever the case may be, wherever you happen to be. At least in L.A., a gorgeous day outside. In fact, I had an air vet call this morning from a pet parent in New Jersey. And just as I'm talking to her, looking out her window, also a beautiful day. Obviously not 80 degrees like it is here, but it was a beautiful, beautiful, clear, sunny day. I guess I'm hoping it's a nice day in Miami, Florida. As I'm understanding, it's a beautiful day there, too. So we have a, a great Super Bowl today with the 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. And um, whatever the case may be, you know, I'm, I was just talking to our producer who's based in Fort Lauderdale, who is a, a big Miami fan. I mean, a, a big, obviously a Miami fan, but a Chiefs fan. And, um, you know, I don't really don't have a, a favorite in this game because I'm in L.A., but I did go to Berkeley as an undergrad. I did go to Davis for vet school, which is Northern California. My daughter-in-law, my son's wife, is a an avid 49ers fan. So what I really want in a game like today is a really good, close game. Nobody wants a blowout at Super Bowl. They, they want to, you, you wait to go down to the last play. That, that's a good game. So uh, anyway, hope wh- whoever your favorite team is, that that team wins. Uh, so we're here to talk about pets. Let's talk pets. You can reach me here. The best way is 877-385-8882. Once again, area code 877-385-8882. AMA, ask me anything. We're here for you, and we want to just help you enjoy your pets more, help you with any questions. I, we, I had an air vet call. The air vet call from New Jersey, as a matter of fact, was a potentially a blocked animal. So, uh, you know, that means that the, it was a cat that was having a tough time urinating. So, uh, you know, these things can happen. And, uh, you know, it's great to be able to talk to somebody. So, first of all, going through the news, proves the news. I, I have some stories here that the one is going to just blow your mind and you'll be so angry. But it, it is what it is. It kind of tells you the nature of some people out there. But first of all, this is very interesting. A mutation, a genetic mutation was found in some dogs, which prevents the breakdown of very popular anesthetic agents, things that are used every day, like midazolam, like ketamine, propofol. So what happens is they find it mostly in greyhounds, but they also find it in one in 50 golden retrievers, one in 300 Labrador retrievers. Now, if you think about Labs and Goldens being in the top 10 most popular dogs in America, one in 50 for a golden retriever, that's, that's very frequent because there are thousands of golden retrievers out there. And so it's very important. And uh, so basically what it does, they're working on a way to test for this mutation because if they have it, the body isn't metabolizing the meds quickly enough and they can be sedated for a long time. Very, very dangerous. So this was also something interesting. There is something called, and again, live and learn. I learn things all the time. Blister beetle. Now, unless you're an entomologist and you know insects, I'm sure you've never heard of a blister beetle. Apparently, horse people have. Why? Because they are found in hay. And there was a story that a bunch of hay was shipped from, I guess, a Wisconsin ranch from South Dakota and Wyoming. So the South Dakota and Wyoming were shipping this hay that apparently had some blister beetles. They produce a toxin called cantharidin. And cantharidin is very, very dangerous. It causes so much irritation in the stomach and intestinal lining that it can actually poke holes to it. They had, let me see, something like 14 horses were killed and over hundreds were sickened because of this toxin from a blister beetle in hay. So for you horse people out there, check your hay. Make sure there are no blister beetles. Or make sure no beetles at all. This is uh, interesting that a West Virginia man and a woman, separate situations, uh, both sentenced to three years probation and a large fine for one was uh, the guy had it found it, I don't know whether it was found or his own dog. It was neglected. It was injured, malnourished, and he wasn't doing anything about it. And, uh, and then the other one was a, a woman, both fined for not taking care of their dogs. And I think that that is great. So my hats go off to West Virginia for having these very stringent rules against dog pet abuse and owners who are not caring properly for their pets. So that's great. There's another story that I'm going to save for the second half of the show because it's basically just to keep your interest. It's the 10 most poisonous pills for your pets. And sadly, a couple of these things on our list are things that are okay. They are approved. 
So really what it boils down to is being very, very careful that what we have in the house, but we'll go, we'll go into it on the second half of the show. But um, so stay tuned for that one. This is also interesting. Talk about malnourished pets. These were wild sea lions found in the Pacific Ocean, malnourished, weak, underweight. They were captured and brought to SeaWorld. And I'm not going to get into the politics of a SeaWorld or a place like that, but I will tell you that they do amazing rehab work. They did get these animals in. They treated them. They cared for them. They doubled their weight. They were doing fantastically, these four malnourished uh, sea lions. And last week, they were released back into the Pacific Ocean, and they're being followed to make sure that they are able to hunt and and catch food on their own now that they're feeling much better, they're older, more mature, and hopefully more seasoned at uh, catching their own food. But I think that, you know, those are the things I, again, we can get back and forth. I I think I shared the story years ago. I went to a place in Arizona that was a rescue rehab sanctuary for animals. And again, some people don't like this. I don't want to get into the the, the politics, but I will tell you, this place was so amazing. And because of the work they do, they had saved several species of birds that otherwise would have been extinct. So when you hear stories like that, and when you talk to the people that work there, and you see their commitment, you see their passion for these animals, I know that some don't like these kinds of places, but I have to tell you, when I see the good work that they do, I do applaud them. And when you think about helping species that otherwise would have become extinct, if it not for places like this, I think that there's some good there as well. This was really a cool story. This is in northeastern Wisconsin, and there is a veterinary class for EMTs that can actually, they're trained to save canine lives as well. There are firefighters and paramedics that have been trained by an emergency medical critical care veterinarian, board certified in emergency medicine and critical care, on the basics of advanced trauma, learning how to put catheters in, treat, drain chests, all the things that need to be done in an emergency. The goal really was that because they're out there and they're working with police departments, that there are a lot of canine units out there now. And oftentimes, as we know, and the stories that we've shared, that the animals, the dogs, are injured in the line of duty. And what happens is now they can call the EMTs and the firefighters and get, the, the, get them out there to the scene. And if it's, even if it's just the dog, they can actually perform some emergency medicine, critical care work to get these dogs into an emergency care facility. So um, I think that's great. I, I would love to see more municipalities follow this lead and work with the emergency medical critical care trained veterinarians to teach EMTs. And again, it's really not that different from what they've already learned. It's just learning how and where the best place to place a catheter, where to stick a needle to drain a chest, how to intubate, things that, look, if they do it in people, you should be able to do it in a dog. And uh, if it can mean saving a dog's life, and remember, there's a little bit of importance here, and I hate to bring this down to dollars and cents, but when you think about how much money goes into training these canine unit dogs, that it's not just, oh, well, it's just a dog. We'll just get another one. No, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get these dogs trained. And they are they have extreme value, not just their life, but their training to help the police department. And therefore, they are now putting a, the deserved uh, attention to these dogs, which I think is great. So uh, for those other municipalities out there, if you know anybody, you should call let uh, people know in your area that this is a great way. It's a good thing for EMTs to learn how to do. This was uh, very sad. You know, people do crazy things. And this one's a crazy one. A man was arrested in California doing illegal veterinary surgeries. So I guess there was a lead or one of the dogs died. And I'll explain that in a second. So he was basically doing surgeries on, for some reason, he was putting himself off as an expert on French and English bulldogs. It doesn't go into the story. It doesn't go into what surgeries were being done. But They found a large number of French and English bulldogs in his facility and the remains of dead Frenchies and English bulldogs. You think? So, uh, you know, when you think is, don't, come on. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Don't think that, that, you know, sometimes it shouldn't always come down to dollars and cents. You got to think of, you know, some, if you're going to go somewhere, look them up. Like I said, people complain sometimes that they have to wait a long time in my waiting room. And it's true. They do. And I, I do my best. But would you rather walk into a place? Think of it this way. I'm going to put it out there to the older folks listening. And you, for whatever reason, you are thinking about getting some reconstructive cosmetic surgery. Would you rather walk into a place 
where there's a booming waiting room and a lot of people waiting to see this the plastic surgery god or walk into a place where you're sitting in the waiting room for a half hour and you could hear a pin drop. Who would you trust more? The one that is busy as can be or the one that's got nobody coming in the door? So just do homework. Make sure if you're, if you're looking for a new veterinarian or a new medical professional of any uh, expert, you know, expertise or discipline, check it out. And I don't think Yelp is the best way to check it out. Talk to people. You get a lot of friends and family are a great source of referral. So you got to just do your homework. Now, this story, and I'm going to I have to pull off. I didn't want to. It was too difficult to copy the things that I wanted to do. So I'm going to just kind of read to the key facts. But this is sick. So there's a guy who was an ex-con, 41 years old, who, and here's the headline, two animals euthanized after arson at Springfield Animal Clinic, suspect charged. So here was a guy, first of all, he had just gotten out of prison. And this is Junction City, wherever that is, 11 counts of first degree arson. He was arrested by the Springfield police. And this happened January 22nd. So, but th- here's the thing that blows my mind. First of all, there's a mandatory sentence of seven and a half years. That's good. But he took his dog or a dog. It says it, he went to an emergency hospital, opened 24 hours. One hour before the fire started, was disgruntled over the bill. He was yelling and screaming, causing a scene. So the office called the police and they came and they had to uh, you know, walk him out. He showed up at 2.30 in the morning and they see him on surveillance cameras starting a fire that caused more than $1,000 in damage. It went through an electrical box. Uh, there were staff members and numerous animals inside, and two of the animals had to be put to sleep because of smoke inhalation. But here's the key. This guy, a guy named Rossi, Matthew Rossi, be careful of this guy, a history of arson arrests in Lane County, including in 2010, he was then 32, 13 counts of arson, reckless burning in connection with the Leverin deliberately set fires in West Eugene, I'm thinking it's this Oregon, which damaged the Wetlands Pub, Eugene Faith Center, and a new building for St. Vincent de Paul. And for that, he received a 10-year sentence. So what does he do? He gets out of prison, he gets into an argument, and he starts another fire, in this case that killed or caused the death of two animals. What is going on here with people? It just blows your mind, doesn't it? So anyway, don't go away. We come back. We are going to talk about the 10 poisonous pills that we have access to. Maybe more of us have access to certain of these pills. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But anyway, that could be very, very dangerous for our pets. We want you to be careful. So stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. If you're attacked by a bear, a dog will throw himself into the mouth of a bear to save you. Dogs are dogs. They pour out their love onto you. Before long, you can't live without them. I have a chocolate cocker spaniel named Lady and a blackmouth cur. He's about 120 pounds, and his name is Arlo. My little cocker, her coat's as soft as a stuffed animal. They're both real soft coats, and my dogs don't have any health problems because they're eating what they need to eat. N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Dynavite is like pouring a multivitamin right onto their food. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. We'll be scooping our Dynavite onto the food, then squirting the liquor chops and the fish oil. They start salivating. Dynavite is nutrition. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. It's a lot of responsibility owning a dog. I get my Dynavite at D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio dot com. <laughs> Welcome back. You're here live with Dr. Jeff Werber here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Best with Dr. Jeff. Um, oh, by the way, I got uh, back recently from the BMX that was in Orlando, Florida, probably one of the nation's top, if not the largest vet conference, the Veterinary Medicine and Expo. It was amazing. There's a lot of great stuff. I did have a chance to interview one of the top doctors for VMX and the CEO. We're going to post those and we can talk about them next week. But very, very uh, interesting stuff going on in the field. I mean, we are getting to that point where I think instead of us always sitting behind and uh, learning 
and taking ideas from human medicine, we are now at the forefront in many areas and the human medicine is going to take stuff from us. So um, I think it's, it's really fantastic. It was a great show. Place was packed. Unbelievable. So uh, anyway, we'll talk. So I was reading up yesterday and uh, came across a list of 10 poison pills for pets. And I was so intrigued, I decided that this really is important stuff. So I want to share it with you. And you need to be very careful. And I can share when I get to one of them, a story that actually happened to me. And it was the most frightening thing as a practitioner, as a veterinarian. So number one on this list is ibuprofen. That's right. Advil, Motrin. These are very, very toxic to animals. Be very careful. Do not, I repeat, do not give these to your pets. It's the most common human medication ingested by pets, whether it's accidental, whether it's on purpose, because one thinks, oh my God, my dog seems to be in pain. Oh, I don't have any aspirin. I don't have any Tylenol. I'm going to give him what I use, which is ibuprofen. Not a good idea. It can cause severe stomach ulcers and kidney failure. The human NSAIDs are usually not safe for pets. So be very, very careful. There's some that are, but then it becomes a dose issue. So again, be very careful. Number two, tramadol. Now tramadol we use very often, but of course the dosing is very different in pets than it is in people. So it only should be used at appropriate doses as determined by your veterinarian. Too much could cause sedation or actually agitation, almost the opposite, disorientation, wobbliness, vomiting, tremors, and even seizures. So uh, again, some, and you're going to hear a lot of these drugs can do this. Number three, alprazolam, good old Xanax. Again, we use it very often in veterinary medicine. At least it's, I do. It's one of my favorite. It's, you know, for anxiety, for relaxation, for dogs that get worked up, separation anxiety is a biggie. But anyway, again, when prescribed at the correct dose, it could be fine, but it can cause also sleepiness, wobbliness, a little too much relaxation. And if you have too much, it can cause a dangerous drop in blood pressure and ultimately weakness and collapse. So again, don't think, I, I always joke with my clients because I kind of use you know, the lower end of the dose spectrum. I say, I can't promise it's going to work. I said, if it doesn't work and the dog is still driving you nuts, maybe you should take the Xanax. But as far as the dog, it's, uh, it can be used at the proper dosing. Adderall, uh, if you have any kids that have ADHD, Adderall is a big popular one, very dangerous, can cause, interestingly, as we know, these are stimulants. So in a dog who doesn't have ADHD, then you have Adderall is going to really super hyperactivity, increase the heart rate, increase body temperature, tremors, seizures. When you or someone in your family are taking certain medications, you need to be very careful. Next one, Ambien. This is not for pets, period. It can make cats very wobbly and sleepy, but usually, again, become very agitated, increases their heart rate. Cats are very interesting. When a cat, even if the drug is doing what it's supposed to do, cats, I guess this goes back to their hunting, they do not like to feel that they're losing control. So when they do, they actually get worse. There is a medication that is okay for cats. There's actually a dose for it called acepromazine. I hate giving acepromazine to cats for that reason. I find that it often has the opposite effect. As soon as it starts taking that effect and they start feeling that wobbliness, that loss of control, that they're like, they, it reverses and they go nuts. And I've got, I mean, I've seen cats go wild on acepromazine. So i um, not a fan. So the same thing with Ambien. And I, I don't know, I've never taken Ambien. I don't take any of this stuff, but I know of people that have I know a person who was taking one and accidentally took a second one. And you talk about someone who becomes incoherent, slurring out of it, starting reverting to, it could be in the middle of a conversation and then all of a sudden start to talk about something totally different, something that happened 30 years ago. I mean, it is so bizarre that I saw that. I said, I am never, ever going to take an Ambien. It is not even worth it. So uh, anyway, my recommendation, don't do it. All right, next up, clonazepam, clonopin. Again, it's used even in veterinary medicine and use it for people at appropriate doses for seizures. It is very effective. It works well, but too much, obviously, cause cause sleepiness, wobbliness, and can lower blood pressure to the point of weakness and collapse. So even if you are on some of these meds, buy your veterinarian, prescribed at the proper dose, be really careful. That so, what, so often what happens is you give a dose, 
All right. And then you go out to do your shopping or whatever. And then your husband comes home or vice versa. You, the husband gives it and says, oh, God, we have to give the dog his medication. And you don't leave a note saying, oh, I already gave it. Whatever. It happens. And then they get a double dose. So you need to be really careful on these medications. If there's more than one person in the house responsible for giving medication, make sure you talk to each other. Leave notes. Text them on the phone. Hey, honey, I just, I just gave the meds. Whatever. Be really careful. All right. Here's a biggie. Tylenol, acetaminophen. It will kill a cat. I can't say it enough. It will kill a cat. Be very careful. I, if you have a lot of pets, you shouldn't even have it in the house. That's how dangerous it could be. So what happens is it causes what we call methemoglobinemia. It binds the hemoglobin sites with methemoglobin, and therefore it blocks. Methemoglobin cannot bind to oxygen. So what happens is on the cells is oxygen, of course, necessary for the cells, for the body. It can't bind, and therefore, it's as if there's no oxygen. So I get a call from a guy. His cat is trying to breathe, huffing and puffing. And he brings him in. His Literally, his tongue looked like a Sharpay. It was purple like a chow chow. And I go, oh, my God. And I take an x-ray of his chest, clear as a bell. So I start asking him. I said, couldn't your cat have gotten into anything like Tylenol? And he goes, he goes, oh, my God, what happened? He was going to bed. He came back from a night with the boys, to, had two Tylenol out. He was took one, swallowed it, and when he went for the second one, was supposedly it was right next to the first one on his nightstand, it wasn't there. So instead of looking for it, instead of knowing, wait, I got cats. This is dangerous. Let me find it. He was already half drunk. He took the second, he took the bottle, took another one out, took that one. So he took his two. Meanwhile, that first, well, the second one was on the floor somewhere. And guess who got a hold of it? I can't imagine why a cat would even want to eat it, but did. And most cats that are, have acetaminophen toxicity will unfortunately pass. Very tough. And it was took a lot of mastery, a lot of help with the emergency medicines uh, group in my area. But we were able to pull this cat through. But I got to tell you, it is frightening to see. And as far as dogs, it can cause liver damage. It is not an NSAID technically, by the way. It is not an NSAID. It works totally differently, but you do not want it near pets, period. Naproxen it is an NSAID. That's a leave, okay, naproxen sodium. Dogs and cats are very sensitive to it. And even a small amount can cause some stomach ulcers, kidney failure, which is what we see with a lot of the NSAIDs. Then you have the last two, again, antidepressant, anti-anxieties. Fortunately, not a problem of mine, so I can't tell you anything about it from a personal standpoint, but duloxetine, which is Cymbalta, no praise for it in pets. So it's agitation, vocalization, tremors, seizures. And the second one, very similar, is Effexor, which is venlafoxine. And venlafaxine is also an antidepressant known as Effexor. And um, for some reason, interestingly, the note here was it comes in capsules, apparently, and cats, some reason, like the taste or the smell because they will eat it. If it's on the ground, they'll chew it up. So again, vocalization, agitation, tremors, seizures. So these things are really bad. So my point is, I know there are a lot of people out there that take these medications. And uh, a lot of these same people have pets. I can't stress enough the importance of keeping your medication away from your pets. There are a lot of medications out there. Things that you probably have in your medicine cabinet that are safe for animals, but then remember the dosing is totally different. Sometimes because of their body weights, they need way less. And sometimes because of the way they're metabolized, they need way more. For example, there's a medication called Atarax. And um, the Atarax is like a strong antihistamine. We take, if you took a 10 milligram Atarax, it would knock you on your behind. In animals, dogs, it's giving, basically it's a milligram per pound. So if you have a 50 pound dog, you would give 50 milligrams of Atarax. That would put you to sleep for a week, maybe a month. So, uh, so you know, again, it, the way it's metabolized. Valium, they're much more sensitive to than we are. And yet, it's a, it's a good drug. We use it often. So it's very important to check with your veterinarian. At the very least, which I don't love, check with Dr. Google if you have to. Go online like WebMD. There's, there are many sites that have nice articles um, that can teach you about some of these medications you have at home. So it's not like you have to throw everything in your medicine cabinet, but on the drugs that we just talked about, those are the big 10. Make sure that they, your pets have no access to them unless, as in some of them, as I said, prescribed at doses by your veterinarian. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you need uh, any help, if you haven't used AirVet yet, you definitely want to find me on AirVet. 
Uh, you can just download it, A-I-R-V-E-T. I can tell you animal lovers love it. They can reach a doctor 24-7. And if you don't really have a doctor that's using the app, you can always go on and put Jeff's, J-E-F-F apostrophe S, telehospital, and, um, and you can reach a, an air vet vet 24-7. It'll save you a lot of money going to emergency when it's not an emergency. You can get questions answered during the day while your doctor is busy or doctor is in surgery. Um, it's, a, it's a plus, plus, plus. So um, uh, anyway, it's, uh, we want to also uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on Facebook, whatever. I do my Tuesday's tips. I do uh, on Thursday, I answer my AMAs. If you have any questions you want answered, Wednesday, go on, give them the quite ask them, and we'll put them on the AMAs. We'll get them answered on Thursday. And we are working, Mark and I are working on another platform here on Pet Life Radio, so on my show, so we can see you live like we did when we had Google Hangouts, which is no longer there. And uh, we're going to try to get you so you can join us live, ask us questions, just click on a, a link that can get you in to our studio, into the camera, and you can we can use, you can join us live on camera with your pets so if you have any questions it's like that's what telemedicine is all about you can ask me right here every sunday morning pet life radio at nine out in the west at noon in the east and anywhere in between depending on your time zone so have a great super bowl sunday hope your team wins or at least have a great game and we will be here next week same bad time same bad channel here on pet life radio take care Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.